everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're new here then hi my name is Miss Paris and on my channel you can find tips advice and information about teaching and also follow along with my personal journey now if that is something that would interest you please consider looking at some of my previous videos and also subscribing because a lot of people kind of view this and then think oh that's useful and then they don't subscribe and then they don't see when I post another video so you guys are missing out, maybe. So today, it is going to be a personal video. Now, I realise I always include that detail in my introduction, um, but I haven't actually uploaded a personal journey, personal experience video in a while, so I thought I would update you, now that we are nearing the end of 2021, um, on what I have been doing this whole academic year. So last time I updated you guys, I don't know if you've seen that video, um, but I was talking about the fact that I was a year one class teacher and at the end of the academic year, so in July, the contract was only temporary and it wasn't renewed. So since then I have been looking for a position. Now all through summer I was looking, I was applying, I signed up to an extra supply agency and they basically said there's nothing coming up at the moment and um, we'll keep looking for you but yeah at the moment we'll just have to wait till September. So September came and I received a phone call and it said would you be interested in doing two week supply as a TA and I just thought you know what I've had the whole summer off the summer wasn't the best time for me actually and I just thought it would be good to get back into the classroom um, you know join in the whole excitement of coming back to school um, and so I did and this was actually a really interesting experience because it was two weeks supply in a, I don't really know how to explain it, it was like a SCN section or like a, I don't know, it was kind of almost treated like a separate entity, but it was a, in a mainstream school. So you had all the mainstream classrooms, reception to year six, and then you had what um, was called the PRB, the pupil resource base. Well, we started with nine children and then later on in the term we ended up with 10. Um, but it was for children who, they went through the council to get a special place here. So they have, they all have EHCPs, um, some of them have SEMH, which stands for social, emotional and mental health needs as well. And you know what, I just thought, because I didn't do a specialism in SEN for my PGC, I just did a PGC in primary, I thought this would be a really good opportunity for me, um, you know, just to work with children, um, that obviously have specialist needs and to get more experience in that area. I have always had a fascination with it. I do have a bachelor's in psychology and I just thought it would be, you know, really interesting. It's not something that I've had experience with bar I think a one day supply and then um, two interviews in special educational needs schools before. So apart from that I had no experience. Um, so yeah, it was absolutely phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really nice for them to kind of see me as a change of face because obviously the people who worked with them before, their one-to-ones slash kind of general teaching assistants, they'd gone, they'd moved on and so obviously for these children who sometimes find change really difficult, it was interesting for me to just come in and see how they, you know, adapted to me, got to know me um, and yeah, that was really, really interesting. And so that two weeks finished and I kind of thought... I would like to stay here um, and actually this wasn't for you know a, a sickness or anything it was actually a position that was coming up they just needed time to sort things out and so I applied for the position to stay there it wasn't as a class teacher it was as a kind of one-to-one -one slash teaching assistant but obviously in um, this classroom there were nine pupils but several members of staff because obviously the degree of needs was quite high um, so I was kind of in charge of three children, um, you know, setting their work, doing it with them, all those kind of things. So you were kind of like a bit teachery, but I wasn't in charge of the whole class. Um, so I applied for that and I got the position. So obviously September, October came and in October a class teacher position came up for the mainstream part of the school. And I thought, oh. I, you know, I really wanted to go for it, but I didn't, I, I was worried that I would look too cheeky having just got a job and then kind of ruining it for them because then they'll have to replace my job that they only just gave me. But you know, I've always said that communication is really important with your colleagues and, you know, head teachers. So I went to the head teacher and I asked, would she accept my application? And she said, absolutely I would. So I applied for it 
Um, it was for a year five position and I received a year six classroom for my interview. And I was kind of worried because I hadn't taught year six since my PPA experience. And obviously in that PPA experience, I was mainly teaching French, but I did cover leadership release time where, you know, I would just be given, here's a lesson plan, go and deliver it because I'm off my leadership time. So I, I, you know, I had had experience teaching year six, but it had been a while and I was quite nervous and I managed to speak to the teacher a little bit in advance. She didn't give me too much information because that would be, you know, an advantage, but you know, I did think I'm in the same school, I'm going to ask her some questions. And she gave me some names to look out for. And she said this, you know, for example, this boy will try and push your buttons. He'll try and assert himself as alpha male, watch out for him. So I kind of went in a little bit nervous. And then obviously you've got the general interview nerves as well. Um, but actually it was a phenomenal lesson. And I am so, so pleased with it. Um, genuinely, I really enjoyed it. The kids enjoyed it. Loads of them thanked me afterwards. And for year six, you know, that's, that's quite nice because often they try and play it cool and they pretend not to find learning fun, but it was really, really nice. And, um, the class teacher after the interview date, so, you know, two, three days later, she came up to me and she said, I really wanted to, to say well done for that, um, interview because I, I went round all the other classes and I kept coming back to you because it was so enjoyable. I also got compliments from the teaching assistant who actually said it in front of my colleague. So I was kind of like, yay, thanks um, for that. But she was really nice and she said, honestly, it was a really great lesson. They were really engaged. They all met the learning intention. None of the, um, none of the activities I had prepared were too easy or too difficult. I managed to pick out those who needed extra support. She said it was absolutely brilliant. And so I thought to myself, even if I don't get this position, I know it's not because I failed in any way or didn't do well, it's just because maybe somebody was more suited for the role. And I think maybe the same evening or the evening after, I got a phone call and they said, unfortunately you didn't get the position. And I just thought to myself, here we go again, you know, the struggle continues. <laughs> and I find that quite annoying. I've had a few really positive um, pieces of feedback regarding interviews and lessons that I've done, but I've never, you know, managed to get that permanent position. And yeah, so I was a bit disappointed, but then she continued and I was like, oh, okay. She said, however, we would love to offer you the opportunity to be the year one class teacher. So again, just as a little tangent, a side note, those of you who are nervous about going to placement in a contrasting year, maybe Key Stage 1, I always saw myself as a Key Stage 2 teacher, and now here I am with two positions <laughs> in Year 1. So, you know, if you're ever worried about going to a contrasting year, don't be, because it might turn out a bit better. Anyway, back to the timeline. So she said, we would love to offer you the position for Year 1 class teacher uh, for maternity cover in January. And so I thought this was brilliant because it gives me just enough time to actually count as my ECT year, which I call ECT, but technically I'm NQT because I started this whole process before the ECT changes um, in September 2021. So it's all a bit complicated, but really I need two terms left to complete my induction year and this would cover it. So as you can imagine, I was absolutely ecstatic. I went from July being really, really gutted about not having you know, not having a position, not having anything lined up, September coming, I thought, oh goodness, you know, you've, you've just paid, you've just trained for ages, you've taught a whole year, and then you're going into to class as a two-week TA supply. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with TAs, absolutely love them, they are a godsend, but you know, when you've just tried and, and worked so hard for a qualification, you kind of want to, you know, go into a school doing what you train to do, but actually now I have a full time um, contract until January and then after January I am a teacher. So yesterday was the last day of term, that means the next time I walk into that school I'm going to be a year one class teacher which is absolutely I don't know, mega exciting. And I actually wanted to film this video on the 9th of December which is my birthday um, and I had my tripod, I was exactly this set up, not these clothes obviously. Um, and then I just got call after call, so I didn't manage to make this video, but the reason I wanted to do it on my birthday was because 
oh, that was that was kind of a crazy morning. So I opened my group chat and the class teacher had a positive lateral flow. I was like, oh no because this was a few days after one of my fellow colleagues in the PRB had also a positive lateral flow. So we just thought, oh my goodness, we're now two people down, stress. <laughs> um, luckily somebody of the inclusion team was covering as class teacher, which was, you know, good, but we were still a person down. And then I also then got a text from the headmistress saying the class teacher that I'm going to replace in January, so the year one teacher, she was also ill that day and she said, would you mind just completely being shoved in the deep end and covering that class? So obviously it's always a bit daunting, but that's what supply is really. You know, you arrive at the school, lesson plans are given to you, and you just kind of go with the flow. So I said, of course, you know, that's going to be my class, it would be lovely to get to know them. Um, so I did, Thursday and Friday, and it was brilliant. They're a really lovely class. A lot of their names are very similar though, which is kind of scary. I'm still getting the hang of their names, but I know at least 20 of their names out of 30, so that was really good. We managed to start building that relationship, so now when I see them in school, they're like, Miss Paris, Miss Paris, um, and bless. When the class teacher actually told them the week later, so the beginning of this week, some of the children afterwards came up to me and said, when Mrs. Da -da 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 goes, did you know Miss Paris, you're gonna be our new teacher? And I was kind of like, wow, really? I had no idea. And you know, I made it this really like, big news hype thing, like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And on the second to last day of term, I made sure to try and send them out to their parents so that the parents could kind of see my face. They did on the Thursday and the Friday, but I let the TA take the lead because with everyone wearing masks, there's no way I can tell who's parent, child, you know, match up. I don't know who's who. But then on the second to last day, she kind of introduced me said, this is Miss Paris, this is who is going to replace me. <laughs> and they all kind of did the sheepish wave from like, miles away because obviously we're trying to keep distance in the playground um but yeah so it's kind of all coming together since july where everything was uncertain i'm now going in to something in january um i've had an absolutely incredible experience with these children um in the public resource base honestly they are incredible and it's been so enlightening to kind of see the different needs that each child has see how we can really support them um i might do some it's really difficult because I wanted to do lots of content on this, but I didn't want to give away what I've been doing until I made this video. But you know, I've learned so much more about EHCPs, I've learned so much more about techniques to support these children, because learning can actually be a really stressful experience for them. When I was kind of going back and forth, because at first we were taking them to a mainstream classroom, so they could be 50% in a mainstream classroom, 50% with us in the class. Um, in the PRB and you know I saw lots of children that had needs that were the same as the children there but sadly they hadn't gone through the whole process of getting an EHCP or there's no um, support in place for them but really their needs were very similar and I thought it was such a useful experience to be able to carry on into mainstream because there's often this kind of dissociation you know children in SEN schools we won't see them in mainstream but because of inclusive education actually you do see these children in both settings and so I thought it was you know it's allowed me to develop so many more tools and skills to take into mainstream I mean on the last day of term there was um this boy who was complete like he ran out of classroom which we call absconding so he absconded from the classroom and he was trying to break down a fire door so the fire door obviously had magnets to the wall so you know you need a little beeper thing to get through and he was you know kind of pulling it so hard half the door was kind of ripping from the wall and normally I would have been terrified or you know I even had a radio with me so I could have radioed for somebody but because of the tools that I had learned through this whole period of time when the class teacher came down because obviously he was being really loud she just left me to it because she knew I could deal with it and I just thought, wow, you know, even for others to trust me that much and to not need to call for backup and for me to just have the confidence in myself was just amazing. So, you know, there he was trying to rip the door and I said, you know, you're going to break the door and he went, I know that's what I want, screaming at me, yelling at me, swearing, but you know, just through pure distraction, verbal de-escalation, um, managed to, you know, bring him down from this, you know, state of anger to a state of being able to talk to me calmly, rationally, being able to tell me how he was feeling, why he was doing, you know, the whole ripping the door thing. And then afterwards we managed to leave that area, leave that corridor, 
go upstairs, get his stuff. We managed to meet downstairs, go to his mum really, really calmly. He managed to say thank you to his teacher, Merry Christmas. And I was just kind of like, wow, sure, you know, I had, I was 10 minutes out of the classroom. As a teacher, you sadly can't always do that. But I was kind of like, none of that would have happened if I wouldn't have had that experience in the PRB beforehand. You know, it would have been a lot of random tools, um, strategies trying to just be shoved at once um, towards this child. And, you know, I would have panicked, been like, ah, oh, what do I do? And actually, there have been days where it's been absolutely tiring and a lot of the people in mainstream thought we were overstaffed. And you know, if they're all in green zone and they're like happily learning and they're sat down calmly, you know, there were times when maybe we were. There were other times when there were people like smashing things across the classroom, throwing, kicking, swearing at you. And in those times, it was really where the teamwork came together and I learned so much from that. And of course, there were days, like I said, where we were knackered, I had been kicked, I've had multiple bruises on my leg at once, been called words that I've never even used in my life like beginning with C, but you know, you, you really start, it develops character and I feel so much more experienced because of it. So hopefully I can get some content out for you guys on that because I know it's been very much PGC teacher training related, um, but I would like to start putting more content out that's useful for you know other teachers as well. Um, so do let me know if that would interest you. I also want to give out, and I'm going to just quote it directly so I don't make a mistake, the Autism Spectrum Teacher Podcast. Um, now, I just found out about her while I was trying to, again, find different ways to support these pupils, um, and again, just try and soak in all the knowledge I could. Um, and, you know, like I said, I've always been interested in it. I did two assignments on SEMH and SCN alone, um, but she's been really, really good to listen to. She's got a podcast on Spotify and I think she has a website as well that's kind of website, blog type style. Um, and she just gives you tips on teaching children with autism spectrum. And there was a quote that I really liked from her and it's, good autism practice is good practice in general. And I absolutely love that. And I wanted to end with that just as a reminder of try and seize any opportunities you can to learn, any opportunities you can to be in situations you might not be familiar with, to interact with children that normally might be um, with a support staff or a teaching assistant or have a one-to-one, -one, because all of this experience that you gather, all these tools, all this subject knowledge and strategies for de-escalating and things like that, they can always be useful in your practice, even if you are an experienced teacher. So yes, that is the update of things I have been up to since July. I might have spoken really fast, and I've probably missed things, I'm going to watch this back and think, oh, I should have mentioned that. But honestly, it's been such a unexpected journey. Um, I'm really glad I went for it, that two week supply, because it's ended up kind of fiddling out potentially the rest of my career. And so yes, I am very excited for January. Um, it is a nice way to end the year. And there you go, there you have it, lots of your questions answered. Because I've been trying to not give concrete answers to your questions about what I've been up to just for this video. So if you did enjoy this, please give it a like and a thumbs up, it's the same thing. Um, comment below any questions that you have because obviously there's so many new things that you might want to ask me. Um, and please do subscribe because I do post um, content and it's a good way for you to be notified whenever I upload next. And you can do that by just pressing the bell. So I wish you a happy new year and a Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Have a good time off and I will see you soon. Bye.